Oh, the best is yet to come when I walk to heaven's gate. For the first time I see Jesus, I can't hardly wait. He'll show me to my mansion, say this is so hard. And I have a feeling in my heart, the best is yet to come. I'm happy every day as I travel to this land. such a great move of the Holy Ghost Sunday night and uh, yeah. I did not get to preach what I wanted to and uh, I still couldn't get away from it since then amen so I'll preach it tonight amen God's been good to us amen. God's been good to us amen let's turn to Luke chapter 15 and one verse verse number four very, very familiar scriptures and uh, parables. And uh, Brother uh, Chapman on Friday night with Beckley preached a message, used this scripture and preached a, a message about how to deal with backsliders. And there was one, one part of this scripture that stuck out to me. And I got, that night I was putting notes in my phone and got back and uh, amen but Luke 15 verse number 4 do they ever say amen? amen what man of you having a hundred sheep if he lose one of them doeth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost and here's that word that stuck out to me until he find it until and what after whatever was lost he searched until he found it until he found it amen and that's what I want to preach tonight for a few moments simply this until until won't we lift our hands ask the Lord to help us today Lord we thank you one more time for this opportunity Lord to be in your presence Lord I thank you Lord for 
what we feel in your house, God. Lord, I pray. Lord, you move like only you can today, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, there's nobody like you in this place today. Oh, hallelujah. I'm your servant. Open our hearts. Open our ears, God. Let us receive what it is that you have for your people today. Lord, we give you all the praise and the glory and the honor. And everybody say amen. And then you may be seated. But until the man of scripture says a man or a shepherd having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them hundred sheep, do if not leave the ninety and nine others that was there in the wilderness and go after that which is lost. And he did it until he found the sheep. He didn't stop. I looked up the word until, and part of it is up to this point. Up to the point. It goes on to say in time or the event mentioned. But up until he found that sheep, that shepherd looked and looked everywhere that he could think of until he found that sheep. And then after he found the sheep, after the until, after he did everything that he could, and after it all happened, and he found that one lost sheep, Brother Ray, right. there's something that happened afterwards. Yeah. I mean, right. Scripture goes on in verse number 6, and when he had come at home, he called up together his friends and his neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me. For I have found my sheep which was lost. Yes. Amen. He let everybody know. Yeah. He got a hold of his neighbors and maybe he got a hold of his enemy. He got a hold of his family. He, could, he, he got a hold of anybody he could think of. And he said, hey, won't you come and rejoice with me? Because that which was lost, I have found. Yeah. Now, you're going to have some points until the until. You're going to have those things at times that you feel lost. That you feel like that you fallen off the bandwagon. That you that, that, that God's not going to do anything for you. That, that you're not going to be able to be able to touch the throne of heaven with your prayers. You're not going to be able to, to, to get into the place of God because of this happening. You, you feel like you've lost your will. You feel like you've lost your want to. You feel like you've lost the desire. Oh, hallelujah. You feel like that everything is just going too wrong for you to be able to get to where you need in God. I mean, and this is made, it doesn't say how long he searched for the lost sheep. The only thing that it said is was he, 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 Searched. I can't give him a word. He searched until. Until. Until he could find that sheep. He said, I'm not going to give up. I know I've, I've got 99 more back in the flock. And I know there's a whole bunch more. But, but just maybe there was something special about that sheep. Maybe it was something that reminded him. Of something else. I don't know. The scripture doesn't say. Use your imagination of why he did. He just did it because he knew that he wasn't going to let that one. He was going to search until he found the one sheep. He wanted to make sure that that one sheep was safe. He wanted to make sure that that one sheep had food to eat. And, and he, maybe he thought, man, the sheep is running scared. Who knows what was going through his mind? The only thing that we know is that he searched until. Right. And after he found that sheep, he called everybody together. And he said, won't you come and rejoice with me? Won't we have a party? Amen. Won't we thank God? Won't we, yeah. won't we thank for what has happened? And he goes, you know what's happened? He goes, that one that was lost. The one that strayed off. The one that went the wrong direction. 
I searched until. Until. And when I he got to the until, I mean, he rejoiced afterward. Verse 7 tells us, I say unto you likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. More than a 90 and 9 just person which needs no repentance. Right. Amen. It's all, it, it thrills this man of God something great when I see somebody walk through the house that's been out for a while and, and I see someone who comes to an altar that I know that's been struggling and then they find that place of the until. They find that place that says, you know what? Everything's not going good for me. Nothing seems going right at the house. Nothing's going right on the job. Nothing's going right over here. Over here. But if I can get into the house of God, if I can get into what I preach about Sunday morning, into my prayer closet, into the sanctuary of praise, if I can enter into his gate with thanksgiving, if I can just get there, some people struggle to get to church. Some people struggle to get to the place in God that where they actually feel the presence of God. Some struggle because of past failure. Some struggle because of past things in their life and, and, and situations in their life. And they've been hurt in the past. Uh, and they come to church, but still they don't get to the until. What happens at the until? You learn to leave it all behind. You learn to let go of it. You learn to say, you know what? I don't care what it does. I don't care what happened in the past. I don't care what anybody said to me in the past. I don't care what's happened in the past. All that I know is that I'm going to rejoice because up until now, I didn't have the victory that I thought I could have. I didn't have the joy that I thought I could have. I didn't have the peace. But I didn't know when I entered into the presence of the good shepherd, when I enter into the presence, but to get there, you got to keep searching. You got to keep saying, God, I don't have it right now, but I'm going to find it. So I can't, I can't go another day without peace. So I can't go another day without joy. So I can't go another day without him being my comforter. I can't go another day without him being my way maker. Without him being my, my provider. So without him being whatever it is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. But if you can get past that, I mean, greater things are ahead for the church. Yeah. Yeah. Greater things are ahead for you. It says, the likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. Amen. Verse 8 goes on and says, either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she loses one piece, here's that one, she still had nine. Some people, they'll lose a penny or something. They'll just kick it across the road because they know they still have other change in their pocket. <laughs> Do it not light a candle right. and sweep the house right. and seek diligently. Uh -huh. Why? For when? It doesn't sure. say until, but it's still another form of it. Yeah. Till. Yeah. Yeah. At least I think it is. Yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> Till. She finds it. She sweeps the whole house. She had other money in her pocket, but she couldn't go without that one piece. She cleaned house. Sometimes in our walk with God, until we clean our house. All right. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Until we get things out of our house yeah. that does not need to be there. Yeah. Amen. You're not going to have the full victory that you've really been praying for. Right. You won't have the full joy that you've really been praying for. Because somewhere inside of the house, amen, there's still a dirty spot. Right. 
Somewhere inside the house, there's still a smudge of a past failure, of a past sin, of a past, I can't let this go. I've got to keep a hold of it. What if I don't stay? What if, uh, I've said it many times before, if you have that spot in the back of your closet, and if you want to have the joy after the until, you need to get to that spot, and you need to see it. something in for free. You get up and testify. Don't give glory to the devil. You made it to the house of God and we are made overcomers by our testimony. The testimony should be is, hey, you know what? God is good. God's about ready to do something. He hasn't done it yet, but I'm sweeping my house. Won't you rejoice with me? Because this is what's coming down the road. And she cleaned the house. And she searched. And she cleaned. And when she found it, after she got all the stuff out of her house, all the trash, mm -hmm. because the devil was trying to trash up your house. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Preached the message several times. I don't know if I preached it here or not. Amen. But talking about building a house. Hallelujah. And the robber will come. And the robber will knock out windows in your house. And the robber will break down the door. Or he'll pry open the door to get inside anything that he can do to get into the house. So to be able to steal what is inside of the house. Hallelujah. If you look at it spiritually, the devil will try any means that he can to pry open the door of your heart, to pry open the door of your mind to get in so he can start stealing your joy, so he can start stealing your peace, so 
speak. You want to start stealing what it is that God did for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what position your mind may be in. It doesn't matter what position your attitude may be in. It doesn't matter how bad or how lost that you may feel in this house tonight. When you get to the until, there is some rejoicing that you can do. There is some shouting that you can do at the until. There is some dancing that you can do at the until. It doesn't matter how much the devil's been fighting your mind. You made it into the house of God. You made it into the presence of the most high God. And you have the opportunity today to say, I made it to the end till. And I'm going to get the joy that I need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to get the peace that I need. The first two parables of Luke 15 is a status of two different backgrounds of people. We have the shepherd who watched over the flock. Then we had a little lady who all that she had was maybe that 10 pieces of silver. But they both lost something. They both had to go and search for what it was that was lost. I don't care how long you've been in church. Right. It doesn't matter what your 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 uh, your um, status is uh, in the community, or the status is uh, um, with all the money that you have, uh, or what little money that you have. Uh, everybody, every now and then, uh, when we get our minds uh, on other things instead of the mind of God, uh, instead of the things of the church, uh, there is something uh, that everybody can lose, uh, and that is uh, the oh, hallelujah. We lose uh, out of the presence of God. Because we lost our desire. So many people in the day and the hour that we live in are losing their desire for the house of God. Losing their desire for feeling the presence of God. This isn't about all emotions. But they are emotions that are involved in living for God. There are the emotions of joy. Yeah. There's time that tears just flow. There's time that you're able to be here, but in other days you're only, only, only able to be here because of all the heavy burdens, right. because of the cares of life. Amen. But if those things can make you lose that one thing, I believe one of the most important things that a child of God should have is the desire for the things of God. Amen. Is the desire for the house of God. Is the desire to feel the presence of God. There's times that we come into here and you may just sit there and there's days that I, I, we've all been there. I've been there. You come and you pray with everything that you got and you feel nothing. You know what I have to do in those days? There's a broom back here beside the refrigerator. Would you get it for me? There's times I come down in the sanctuary every now and then, and I look because there's there's stuff that gets trapped in from the outside. Thank you, sis. So. I bring the broom to the house of God. Well, it's already here. I bring it into the sanctuary. And I find those spots. And I gather all those spots. I did it right before church. So hopefully it's not that dirty. But I, I find those spots. And I get them all in one pile, for the Ray. Yeah. And then I take the dust paint. This is elementary. That's just how I is. I go down. And I pick up the dust that's there, the dirt that's there, the trash that's been trotted in from outside of the house. Right. And I take that to the garbage can and I dump it into the garbage can. You know what we need to do? Yeah. Every now and then, when we start losing that desire, we need to go through our house. 
Let me get this bitterness. All right. Let me get this, this, this circumstance. Let me get this thing over here that that's stopping me. Let me just pile it all together. Let me just get it all together. I don't want to see you. And when you get it all together, pick up that spiritual dustpan and say, devil, you've been fighting me long enough, but I'm at the until. I've been searching for every speck of trash that's entered into my house from the outside. This time of the year, it's cold and it's snowy and it's muddy. And, and, and we have to put salt down to make sure that someone doesn't slip. And that stuff gets tracked in into everybody's household. And you've got to get the broom. Right. And you've got to get the mop. And you have to get it all together to clean it up. I don't do the same way spiritually at cold times in our walk with God. At times whenever it seems like we don't feel anything, we feel we're all dried up or the rains of life are pouring down and we start trotting through the cares of life and we get dirt on our shoes. We get mud on our shoes. We get all the smut from outside of the house of God. Get it together. Pick it up. To that spiritual trash can and say, you know what, devil? Huh? I'm throwing it away. Huh? I'm getting rid of it all. Huh? And tomorrow's another day. Huh? I'm going to call a brother and a sister and I'm going to say, you know what happened today? Huh? God showed me. Huh? God did this for me. Huh? God brought me through this. Huh? I didn't think I was ever going to get over it. Huh? But I got through the house. Huh? And I started searching huh? for what it is that I lost. Because she called everybody together and said, won't you come rejoice with me? Because that coin that was lost is now found. It didn't matter the status of the shepherd or the status of the little Little lady who lost her coin. They both lost something. Huh? And they both had to go searching. Huh? And when they both found it, huh? they called everybody together to rejoice with them. And, and then we get to the third parable of this passage of Scripture. Now, I, I'm not going to read it. We know it. Man, but it talks about a dad. I had two sons. And the one said, Daddy, I want what belongs to me. I want what belongs to me. And I'm leaving your house. I, 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 I'm going out. Sadly, he forgot about how good it really was. Right. Inside of Daddy's house. He forgot about, he had probably the servants to clean up his mess. He had food on the table, Sister Deborah, when he was inside daddy's house. And his story goes on in the scriptures. You can read in the rest of, rest of, of Luke chapter 15 about this parable. And here he is. He goes out and he finds a friends outside of the house. If you ever search for that person that you want in your life outside of the house of God, they'll drain you dry. Yes. I said they'll drain you dry. Spiritually. Because he had those friends when he was forking out the dough. Right. When he was paying for everything. They was right there. You I'm your best. Ooh, I'm your best bud. Yeah. I mean. You call him, oh yeah, I'll be over. And then his until was a little bit different than the shepherd and the little girl, the little lady who was searching in the house. Because what happened to him, he had it all. He had all that he ever desired. He had the desires of anything that he wanted. He could have asked his daddy for anything. 
It doesn't say this is just my thinking. If you don't think that way, that's your opinion. This is just my opinion. But he had it all, Sister Michelle, and he gave it up. It breaks my heart when I see people who's had it all put back together. I've been in this, I've, I've been in this all my life. And over the years, I've seen somebody that was a nobody. Life messed up. Nothing going right. Find our way through the trash of life and get into the house of God and pray. And God puts them back together. <coughs> puts them back together. And then because of whatever got them sideways, whatever hair got in their biscuit, whatever made them go crossway, you see them from very slowly. Going away from the until. It's not always all at once. I've been in this long enough. And I've been around you all long enough over the last three years. I know. And there's some days I like to just. <laughs> do, you see? do you see the direction that you're going? And here he is. Lost it all. Now he's hungry. Now he has new shoes on his feet. Now he probably stinks. And he has to become part of the world. Because I said he joined himself. And when but there was still something. And this is my prayer. For people I see that's not where they need to be with God. And any status of your walk with God. There's a lot of people who knows how to be a player. And play church. But here he is, and all of a sudden, he's about ready to partake of the slop. He got to his until. Why am I here? Why have I let myself? And this is what happens to a lot of people. They, they get out of the presence of God. Little Ray. And they get out into the world and they start feeling that. That tug. Oh, it was so much better in the house of God. It was so much better living for God. And they got that tug. But at that moment, if they don't pick up the broom, like the little lady who swept the house, if they don't keep searching like the shepherd did for that one lost sheep, you know what they'll do? Start partaking of what it is that's consuming their life. But that boy that day got to his until. He said, why am I here? When, if, if you ever get to that place that you're cold on God, but you find one day that God starts tugging at your heart and you ask yourself the question, why have I let myself 
get to this place. You need to be like that prodigal son. He said, I just have to be a servant. What do servants do at people's houses who have, I don't even know if there's servants till these days. Maybe it's still back in the day. What did the servant do? They cleaned the house. They did whatever that was needing done around the house. And they cleaned it. And maybe, just maybe, he said, the Bacchanoni, the servants have it better than I am. They've got food. I don't have nothing right now. So he starts that journey back. And it was probably hard. What's people going to think about me? Because I've done this. Oh, well, you know, it, 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 it's crazy. And, and I, I saw it, I read it somewhere a while back, and I think about it all the time. Some backslider comes back to the house of God, and the only thing that people in the church can think of is the sin that the backslider has. Instead of rejoicing with that person yeah. because they made the journey back yeah. into the house. Right. Yeah. We've all sinned. We've all made those mistakes. Maybe some nobody knows about. But you. But he started on that journey back to daddy's house. And he probably had to sweep some things out of his life all the way. But the greatest thing was that daddy was looking for him. Yeah. And when the boy got past the until, Sister Crystal, it's great to see you back. Get past the until. He had somebody there that was searching for him. Mm -hmm. That was looking for him. Not really searching because the daddy didn't lose, didn't leave the house. Brother Chapman said it so well the other day. There's some that are prodigals. You have to let them go. But still look for them. <clears throat> let them fall. But still look for them. And when they finally pick themselves back up right. after that until. And they make their way back, then you embrace them. And when he came back, Daddy said, Kill a fatty calf, find the best robe, get him another pair of shoes, because my son, which was lost, is found. Is found. Is found. Let's have a party because he made it back. Let's take it. Because he made it back. <laughs> Up until the whole pit, the boy had a house. The boy had money. The boy had clothes. But when he left the house, he lost it all. But when he came back, Whatever it was that he had didn't have was still there for him. It didn't change. I'd love to tell people who's left the house of God, whenever you're ready to come back, nothing has changed. He's still the same God. He's still the same God. He's still the same God. He'll still be your way maker. He's still going to be your provider. He's still going to listen to you when you cry. Listen to you when things are going wrong. All that he's waiting for is for you to be like that shepherd and keep searching. Or be like the little lady with the broom. Keep cleaning your house. You may not get every speck of dirt the first time, but if you keep cleaning sooner or later. Sooner or later, those things in your life that you've missed and that you've lost, you'll be able to rejoice and call your brothers and sisters together and have them rejoice with you because you found it. Won't you lift your hands? Hallelujah. Oh, these altars are open. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I can't.
Without you. 